Hi, how are you? I hope you are okay. Welcome to my studio. It's Finavar and um, I'm going to do a bit of um, lamp makeover with you today. So I hope you are going to join me and you are going to uh, enjoy today's show. So if you're watching, please let me know and at the same time, share with your friends and share in the other groups as well, so we can start together. I'm going just to look at the second screen. Hopefully this is going to work. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Hello everybody, how are you? Happy New Year, Rose. Good to see you. Let's see. Okay. Okay, I can see the other screen now. Perfect. Welcome. Hello, Annika. Uh, yes, you found me. Hi, Debbie. Uh, I'm very, very glad to see you. And um, if I can tell you something, Debbie, please check your messages on Patreon because I sent you a message and I'm not sure if you got it. And hello, Caroline. Hello, Nayara. Hello, Asha. Hello, hello, everybody. Uh, I have to show you what is the item I'm going to use today. I think this is going to be quite fun. And I think you are able to get similar item uh, locally as well. It all depends what is uh, in your local shop. So and um, let me show you this is the main <laughs> the main character of uh today it is a quite cute metal lamp and you can turn it on it's battery operated and it is from ikea <laughs> and i found it uh, in our local ikea in dublin uh, i bought three because i wasn't sure uh, what i'm going to do with them and today I'm going to use that one for the special makeover and we're going to do some cool techniques. If you are wondering what kind of item is that, here's the packaging. It's called Strala or, or something else. Katya will be able to tell you better. And this is lamp battery operated from IKEA or in Polish IKEA. And this is something that was on sale. Uh, I think that was kind of an item that's supposed to be for the Christmas time, but uh, I am not completely sure because it was the first time I was in Ikea since beginning of last year because we were on, in the lockdown for a long time. I didn't go shopping. So I was really running out of things. And just after... Um, beginning of December I got there and I bought some of these so if you're looking for something similar they were quite cheap um, items from Ikea and uh, as you can see you just put batteries inside it may really be a lovely um, detail for your home but the techniques I'm going to show you today they operate like they work on every surface so this is just the general idea what you can do uh, just to give you some idea what we're going to do I'm going to create this kind of patinated look this is easy to get of course I'm going to um, upcycle this uh, this lamp a little bit so we are going to be inspired by the uh, copper patinated look very very uh, fun to make and i'm going to make that lamp look antique mm, just to compare this is real object made made of brass i think and this is natural patina that happened so in the end this one is a little bit more blue but it's really up to you how far blue or far, how far green you're going to go. So these are quite convincing, I think. Uh, let me now just put you on the uh, top look of the um, camera. 
And again, if you can share this video uh, in my group, uh, Finaver and Friends Open Studio, share that video in Create with Prima group and in the Patrons group as well. That would be lovely because this way more people will find it. Hello, Denise. <laughs> so uh, again, we are starting with this battery operated lamp from Ikea. I can show you. Oh, you put the batteries here. So you have to keep that rim uh, without any glue, any kind of decoration so you can open and close that easily. And you can just replace the batteries whenever you're going to go. And in case if you're looking for this IKEA, it was Strala or Strela. I don't know how to pronounce it properly. Uh, Katya is better. She would tell you exactly. And that is something that I got in the last week, uh, three, two or three weeks in uh, my local IKEA shop. So you can check. Uh, maybe there's something similar available and maybe your local shop is uh, delivering that uh, home as well. So, you know, they were not expensive. It was like three euro per item. So not expensive at all. So let's have a look at the table. And I will just try to position you in the best possible way. Okay, so this is the lamp we are going to use. And I already put the batteries inside to show you the uh, final look. Of course, batteries are uh, sold separately, so this is up to you. And this is the look we are going to uh, go for on this lamp. And um, this is not the end. I decided to make it a little bit uh, more fancy and in my home stash I found this this is old candle holder you can even see the leftovers of the candle inside and if you put one on the top of another it's going to be just perfect so I decided to give it extra kick and I'm going to join these two elements using my heavy body gel and then I will be able to open, put the batteries inside and close again. Of course, because we are going to imitate the old look, we need to create some more detail on this lamp. We need to add a little bit more of texture. So uh, this would be helpful. This is real glass, so I put it in a safe place. And this, this is kind of plastic and this is a LED light inside. So this is absolutely safe to play. We have to start with some basic steps and that is going to be preparing the surface. Grab any kind of gesso you may have at home. It may be clear gesso, white gesso or black gesso. We need to prepare this metal surface for uh, repainting and adding some textures to it. So this is our first step. Of course, it will dry quickly. So this is not going to be long step, but this is very, very important when you work on um, upcycling when you work on the redecorating of different items that you are going to work. I just put the apron on because I forgot, of course. I wanted to look pretty and then I forgot about the apron and protection is important. So what we want to do is to make these two metal items look like it is one item putting one on the top of another. And then I will show you some options of what you can use for decoration and how to get the look of the patina. This is the one that I was showing here on this piece that I was doing for my patrons before. And I was doing two kinds of patina finish. This is one of the ways. So let's start with a bit of clear gesso. This is the one I have here on hand. And I'm going to put it just on the palette and one coat of the clear gesso on the top of the lamp, drying it, and then we will continue on the bottom of the lamp as well. Gesso is going to make the whole surface matte. 
and that means all the waxes, all the pastes, all the paints are going to stay much better on our item. I'm not going to paint the light because it's matte anyway and I can hold it this way and this is very helpful. One thin coat is going to be enough. So I'm trying to go everywhere so I can easily put new coats on the top of it later. I was surprised myself, Katya. I didn't know it was there. I think it is on sale now, at least in Ireland. So if you are able to go to Ikea in the next days, you may still able to get a check on the website if they have it or not. I think it's very cute. And it's going to be lovely detail for, um, you know, kind of the home decor that you may want to have if you have more of the vintage style in your house but these techniques they work really well on the photo frames on the uh, mirror frames they are great for adding textures and patina look on the details of the furniture as well so just you know keep it as an inspiration and of course for me it is going to be another uh, item I'm going to put on my uh, shelf as my decoration. Uh, it doesn't matter, Gabby, which kind of gesso you are going to pick. I have clear gesso here on hand and I use that one. It may be white, it may be black, and it may be clear. It's going to be completely repainted anyway with metallic paint and patina look, so it doesn't matter. You can check, you can see this is not completely covered. So if it's not completely covered, you can put another coat just in case. It's better to be safe than sorry, of course. And in the meantime, I will paint also my second part. I will make this lamp bigger, taller. And um, I really think this is high time to use that old candlestick candle holder that I have. Yeah, check online. Uh, I don't, I th I've seen it online on the website. So um, it was on the home deliver option, but we were going there to pick up one cupboard anyway, because I was waiting to buy it for too long. And I just took it from the store. They were there in the sales section. So you just have to go online and check. And if not, maybe somebody will be just selling the used ones after some time. You know, people sell IKEA stuff as well. I will put it all close to my fireplace to dry. And in the meantime, we'll paint the second one. This is the advantage of working with the fireplace. <laughs> As you can see, this is not a very glamorous item. This is something I found on um, thrifting or in a flea market, but it's going to fit together with my uh, lamp. So it's going to be perfect item to combine with the fake oil lamp. And again, we do the same thing. One coat of just minimum. It all depends how it's going to sit. As you could see on that metal lamp from Ikea, I, it was better to put two coats. This is something which is not too fancy, just, you know, metal. You can probably get them, again, in the sales section of some of the home decor stores from time to time. Usually they make this kind of sales after Christmas because people usually buy candle decoration for the winter time. And after winter time, after Christmas, they put them on sale. <laughs> hello, hello, good to see you all. Yeah, it's giving new life and making these items a little bit more presentable as well. Because, you know, sometimes they are 
really interesting in shape, but they look ugly for some reason. Like this is completely not our color or we don't like the details, but still there's huge potential in it. So we can use them as, for example, a part of the bigger composition. This could hold some lovely uh, uh, 3D object. If you had some kind of glass dome you could put on it, or if you wanted to uh, create some dimensional flower composition or some branch, you can all join that using proper glue such as heavy body gel. And then you have that nice bottom that is going to make it look much more sophisticated and presentable. And, you know, it's this kind of project that is very easy to change. Like I'm going to show you a very quick, very simple way of changing the look. And of course, um, construction is up to you. I'm going to show you two options uh, because I would like you to um, get inspired. Personally, I'm going to go more for the steampunk look because this is what what are the things at my home usually like. But if you want to go more romantic, no problem. It's just the items you are going to use and uh, uh, details you're going to add. So as you can see, the first step is super, super easy. Covering with the clear gesso, black gesso or white gesso. So coat of primer to start with and then letting it dry. And I will just put it again next to the fireplace. So this is going to dry naturally. In the meantime, my oil lamp, you can see it's completely matte already. And I am still able to uh, open that. This is important not to uh, glue that rim so you can put the batteries back if you'd like to use it as a light in the future. And now, what are the options of decorating it? Uh, first of all, um, you can use some kind of molds, right? And uh, for this kind of object, you have to look for the smaller molds. I was playing with that mold. This is called Aviary from uh, Redesign with Prima. And I made some items which are kind of flexible. This is hot glue. And I'm not so sure I want to do that. These are uh, other elements from the same mold. They are still wet, so I can shape them if I want to. This is all made with uh, Prima modeling material. So when it's half dry, you can stick it on your project easily. That is one of the options I was thinking I can arrange it on the uh, sides of the lamp and then a little bit on the bottom. And if you would like to do that, the whole trick is when you are taking your material out of the bag, to, let's say I'm going to make one small for you. Yes, a very super, super cute. And I like the size of the birds because they're going to work for the uh, mixed media projects as well. Make sure the modeling material is going to be quite soft. And then when you are planning to make some elements with it, let's say I want to go in here and to take part that I'm going to stick on my project later, press it in nicely. If you feel that your clay or your modeling material or air drying film, you know, FEMA, whatever you prefer to use, uh, is sticking too much to your mold, you can put a coat of starch or uh, baby powder first, and then it's going to be easy to take it out, right? So you can put it on the side so it's going to dry a little bit, and then it's still flexible enough to make it round. So when you stick it, uh, you can make your uh, details rounded on the um, surfaces such as flower pots or vase, vase, sorry, vase, not the vase, vase or uh, the mug 
or whatever you like. So this is uh, an option, of course. The other option is to go with more steampunk style. And this is what I'm planning to do. I would like to add a bit of the uh, leaves and then some of the stars to it. So this is going to be quite fun. And I'm going to mostly use heavy body gel for the gluing. Yeah, you can use oil instead of cornstarch, a lot of options. You can use potato starch as well. Something that is going to help the molds to pop out, okay? So this is the, the part that uh, I was planning to join together with my uh, lamp. And just to show you what could be the plan of arranging the elements, I could now take my heavy body gel and you can see this is still quite soft. I can just glue it on the side of the composition, adding some extra flowers. And this way create quite nice and very romantic um, effect that uh, will be probably close to the item you would be able to buy somewhere on the flea market. So this is, you know, worth trying to see if you would like to get the details like that. And it's, it's fun. And of course it is possible to glue it when it's half dry and you would get the look which uh, is similar the, uh, to the brass frame I have here. So this is going to be a little bit imperfect and still uh, quite cool. So that's option number one. But remember, uh, make sure that your elements are still flexible. Okay. Uh, it's still uh, wet on the other side so I can bend it easily. The other option is to play more with texture in the more grungy way. I want to uh, keep more of the natural look of the lamp today. I'm going to add textures with some paste. I will take the graphite paste because it has some kind of uh, sandy finish so it will add a touch of grunginess to it. And I'm going to add a bit of the steampunk touch, maybe, um, let's say, uh, some cogs and gears to uh, the small composition. So first I'm going to find the place where I want to add my items. I'm going to take the metal embellishment to start with. As you can see, it is possible to bend. And there are two ways. You can hold it a little bit in place with the hot glue for a moment if you're starting. Of course, don't touch with your fingers because you will be sorry. And then we are switching to heavy body gel, oh, which is very, very good glue. And you can add items of your choice. For example, metal flower or stars. I don't want to put too much on this project because I would like this to be quite natural, quite um, vintage looking without going too far with embellishments. So now I'm just going to add two or three dimensional elements. I'm trying to keep it again away from the rim. So, oh, shish. of course I did it. Of course, I broke it already, so you see what happens <sighs> when you are not patient. So I'm trying to keep it away from the room. Yeah. And then maybe some stars and some pebbles to add the finishing touch. Okay. I need a stay. Thank you. I need a leaf on the opposite side of the composition for good measure. Right. Some of the imperfections, of course, they will be here, but you can push them in. 
we're going to add quite a lot of the um, metal details so nobody will see that. I intentionally put it on the opposite side to the uh, lamp starter. I don't know how do you call it, knob, uh, because it will be hard to have those details and that <laughs> quite mov movable part at the same place. So now I can add a bit of the details I would like to see in here, but as I said, not too much. Let's look for something for that side. Oh, that will be enough. Oh, stay. Okay. Now I need a little bit of the smaller stars. Hello, everybody. Well, it, it, if I'm going to give it too much of the detail, I think it is going to take over the whole composition. I will try to go for lighter touches. And, you know, you can always add a little bit more if you want to. It's up to you. But this lamp is small. So if I, you're going to put half of your treasure box on it, soon you won't really see the natural beauty of the item. Don't worry about these imperfections. It's go we are going to make it grungy anyway. So all these visible parts. I'm trying to hmm let's give it a nest. <laughs> oh perfect. I will make a little nest for you. Is that okay? Oh how cute. Wonderful. Uh, we have a bit of a problem with the lotus flowers because the manufacturer uh, was closed for quite a long time. And we are looking for the one uh, who is going to make a replacement of that item. So that's why it was so very hard to find the lotus flowers. I have the last lotuses at home and I'm not hoarding them, but I really consider keeping them for uh, the special project. Okay, so maybe just this three stars here. And here we have that star, that star. Okay, maybe some a bolt to finish. Yeah, it's a great flower. I completely agree. I love the shape of it. So I hope they will be able to find some nice company who will take it over. It's a problem sometimes because you get used to that everything is there and then they disappear. I know it was all uh, virus related and not all of the companies were able to survive but I feel so so sad it happened to us so if you're worried that your lamp is going to get ruined uh, you can give it a moment of drying with the heat gun so it is all going to zap a little bit and this way you can think in the meantime about other elements you can use. For example, some vintage pebbles. They are nice sizes as well. So our first step is almost done. I just need to do something to the bottom of the candlestick as well. Probably some stars and maybe another flower. Not too much. Look at these, they're super, super cool. I'm trying to go here with the heat gun 
so it's going to dry from this side as well. And now when I'm looking at all these details, I keep thinking, why not? Let's, let's add a bit of the pebbles as well, but just the small ones. Ah. How are you? I'm just, you know, if you have any questions and I'm not answering because I'm looking at the project instead of the screen, you just keep asking so I will finally be able to see it. Don't be shy. Yeah, the composition is going to be very simple because uh, this lamp is not big at all. And we want to preserve the natural look of it, not adding too much. Just to grunge it up a bit, make it a bit more steampunk inspired, but... Um, that would be it. I don't really have to do more because it's pretty as it is. Oh, it's wet. I have to dry it. Okay, I will just let it dry for a little bit in this position so it's going to dry flat and then I can add more. In the meantime, we can look at the bottom of the candlestick and we can just uh, look at the options. Okay, so maybe we can repeat similar composition just based on the leaves. I will just shape them a little bit so they are going to fit better again you can help them stay in the first moment with the hot glue but remember hot glue is just temporary solution so we need to look for the better uh, glue such as heavy body gel or <laughs> modeling paste or something else that is going to hold these elements in place in a permanent way so in the meantime here I'm going to add similar but again not too big composition we would like to make uh, create the feeling that both of the parts of this item they're uh, matching nicely because in fact we are going to join two uh, random objects so it's good to have something that is going to give us the feeling of continuation and to add nice touches yeah leaves are a really nice uh, element if you need to add something quite sturdy and dimensional at the same time because they are going to be flexible. Even if uh, you're going to bend them, it's metal, so uh, no harm. Yeah, of course you can use modeling paste instead of heavy body gel. It's going to do the same thing. Drying time is tiny bit longer, but just tiny bit. Uh, modeling paste is for gluing and for stenciling and for adding textures for example this texture i was showing you in the beginning this is done with modeling paste and that effect i created using modeling paste it is uh, kind of flexible after drying but really really sturdy so if you were lo uh, looking at modeling paste you can really find a lot of um, techniques uh, which you can use it for for example you can use it with the texture tools. You can use it to um, create dimensional effects with stencils. You can spread it and then create textures inside of it just using uh, even pressing stamps inside of it. And then, of course, for gluing, 
that is another option and a lot of people is using modeling paste for gluing if they plan to repaint the project anyway mm, not bad at all we have really nice start maybe just for good balance two or three stars on the other side and this is going to be ready for drying as well I have to tell you when I <laughs> and this is between me and you every time when I'm supposed to make small quick project I fail I, I it's the hardest thing for me to make smaller uh, not so complicated project because I naturally add a lot of things I put a lot of layers so when I have a challenge to create something uh, well, not too complicated. I always feel very stressed <laughs> because I don't know what to do. Okay, that should work. So um, I'm quite happy that I found this uh, lamp. So for those of you who are wondering, you know, uh, where this um, um, oil lamp is coming from this is uh, from ikea this is one of the items i just bought i think really a few days before christmas and it was on sale so i think you can check your local ikea website maybe they are still there i'm not sure how it is uh, how the um, stock is different in different countries and when things go on sale in different countries at ikea because this is always a little bit like you know local uh local management and they do things differently uh, but if not this really this kind of concept this kind of um project it may be done with almost everything and all the techniques I'm showing, they are great for furniture and um, redecorating, creating some special effects on the frames, on the mirrors. So don't be shy, just go for it. Now I'm pressing the heavy body gel in there. And this one will go for a bit of drying and I can check that one. Oh, that one is much better already. So now this one is going to dry. We are adding last touches. In here. Let's see, we've got quite nice sturdy background. I can still open, which is important. Yeah, flea markets are perfect. And again, for those of you who were not here before, I will show you the packaging of it. Strala. from Ikea this is the one that I got so now let's look what else we can do I would love to put something inside of the flower to make it look a little bit nicer and better just to remind you another option is to use the flexible molds like this one and to bend them and to glue them on the uh, round object when they are still wet and this is the great way of uh, dealing with the problem is that items are bendy just to show you the ones i was trying to fit uh, before and this combination would fit really nicely on the bottom of the candlestick as well i was trying to use the mold aviary but it will be far too romantic for me so 
I really go for more uh, steampunk style myself. So this is what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to look for some of the screw heads. I can fit inside of the flower, maybe one or two bolts. They're going to be really cool. So it's going to look even more steampunk-like. Yes, Latern, exactly. It's going to work really well. Mary, you know uh, how to do it because this is going to be very similar to doing mixed media um, on the canvas. Remember, you have to start with the gesso and then you can go with um, your choice of the embellishments and in the end you can use paint or waxes this is the the part we're going to do in a moment now so let's do that here and then one more here yeah steampunk is great and you know um because i make it for myself i kind of feel I want to make it the way, the, the way I'm going to really enjoy it and this is going to be on display at my home but if you feel you're going for romantic style much more you know traditional vintage um, little elements uh, from the molds are going to be a great option I'm really tempted to stick something to these I'm not sure it's going to be dirty but I should have diamond ooh maybe I should put a diamond on the top here yeah this is the biggest cute <laughs> that's really cute <laughs> okay so you have it in Austria perfect and you have it in the US so I can see lamps from IKEA are going to be quite popular items to buy get them when you can because they were um, quite inexpensive and they were on sale so just saying, usually if something goes on sale, it's not going to stay there for too long. <laughs> so, I'm just making sure everything is going to stay in place. We have our steampunk looking lamp. Now we are going to work on the texture to grunge it up a little bit. Remember, we are inspired by the natural aging of the metal, so very rarely uh, this will be beautiful and flat. Usually there's some kind of corrosion happening and uh, that's why it's important to add extra textures as well. Look, this is the natural uh, brass with the patina and whenever you can see the details it has a bit of the texture in it as well so if we want to make it more convincing good plan is to add a bit of texture to it as well so let me check how these are okay not bad at all it's sitting there so whatever you have on hand you can create your own texture paste or you can take one of the uh, texture paste that uh, you will have ready. I'm going to use the uh, graphite paste. So this is black sand inside of the gel medium and of course we won't see it but this is quite fine sand so when I'm going to add these textures it is not going to be too overwhelming you know what i mean it's not going to be super super detailed sorry uh, super super coarse it's going to be more 
delicate. So I'm going to take a brush and I'm going to push a bit of that into the composition, trying to reveal some parts of the elements and some of them look more like covered in corrosion. I'm not sure if that's English word, but I hope. So this is going to give us a bit of this old looking texture. I'm not going to uh, glue it now. I can glue it later. This is not going to be a problem. And it's easier for me to show you both parts because I figured out if it's going to be that long, it doesn't fit in the screen anymore. So you have to wait until the very last steps until I will be gluing that together. And I hope this is fine because it's much easier for me to work in two separate parts. I don't have to worry that they may be still moving. Don't try to imagine when, uh, in which parts this texture is going to be giving you the best results, of course. How can I use dried pat patina paste and solutions? My uh, color are dry. It would be wasted. Any suggestions? Yes. Yes, as long as it is not completely dead, like 100% dry, there are many ways of reviving it. First of all, uh, take hot water, put it on the top of your uh, patina, try to poke some holes in it, like I'm poking now in the, um, uh, in the paste, and then let it sit for a few, few hours. Then come back and repeat. And if you're going to see, it's going to start breaking and going to, starting to get softened. Then you can continue with the water or even better solution is to use a uh, liquid gel medium or liquid color fluid medium, which is the base, uh, is the base of the acrylic paints and acrylic mediums. And then repeat the whole process. This is the way of saving of your um, pastes and uh, your acrylic paints and patina paste and rust paste because they're all cousins of acrylic paint. You can't save this way your modeling paste though and you can't save your um, gel medium. They are not going to uh, be revived. So it's kind of important to give them uh, you know, a check from time to time and add water before they're going to get completely solid. Yeah, so as you can see, I'm trying to create the feeling it's kind of older. And this is also a great way of hiding all the imperfections. So if you're gluing some things on the top of your uh, object, maybe you're adding extras to your uh, frame, or you would like to add some details to your furniture, and you're going for more uh, vintage, grungy, steampunk style, uh, using texture paste is in fact uh, making that look more natural Closer to natural corrosion. Thank you, Caroline, for co <laughs> confirming this is a real word and I didn't make it up. And uh, this way you're going to get um, more interesting results. The textures are going to look much more natural, of course. So as you can see, that should be enough. I'm just trying to give extra on the edge here. I didn't paint the edge too well. Oh. I was in a hurry. So I'm just going to brush the graphite paste on it and it's going to stick a little bit as well. Okay, so we are going through the ugly stage of our work. We're adding the texture, we have no color yet. So uh, yeah, we have this texture texture. Now we can repeat the same thing to our top of the lamp from Ikea. So a little bit of dabbing. Remember, don't paint the rim, okay? This has to stay open. I know we get excited sometimes. <laughs> and then uh, this is a mistake and we have to find solutions and so on and so on. So just saying, try to keep that part clean. So I'm just dabbing it for the texture and then we can find uh, options of repainting it. 
it's up to you really what you're going to use different people different mediums i'm going to show you the things i think are the easiest so you know just making that a little bit more old and crumbly corrugated so again up to you how far you want to go and of course before any painting or waxing we have to make it dry so now it's a moment to ask questions and I can dry it in the meantime You can use any kind of texture paste you have on hand. However, the ones with the sand are going to look more natural and more convincing. Remember the texture uh, is one thing, the color is other. So you don't really have to focus on the original color of the paste if you plan to repaint it. Thank you, thank you, uh, Aliti, I hope it is still possible to move a little bit and you will be able to save it because it's really, really sad when you discover it is uh, hard to use it. And usually we discover that last moment before we want to do something. So it's good to check on your art mediums from time to time, how they are doing in the meantime. So now we are not far from the final look. Again, I'm going to dry it so uh, I don't have to do two things at the same time. Uh, I'm going to dry the bottom and the top I'm going to put in a place close to the fireplace so it is going to dry naturally. I was using graphite paste which is black but you can use any other kind of paste such as white sand paste uh, you can use a modeling paste adding some sand to it gel medium with some sand in it uh, you can add a bit of the art stones as well it's going to be more cr crunchy though and um, i'm trying to make it more natural uh, looking so you can see the paste is turning uh, more black and more dry. I'm trying to check with my fingers. Remember, this is metal, so it's easy to uh, burn your fingers by accident when you touch. Now, if you didn't add a lot of elements, you don't have to add gesso again. But because I added this shiny metal, just for my um, convenience and to make sure everything goes well, I'm going to add a bit of this clear gesso on the top of this flower as well. Oh, go hot. I can feel the flower is moving, but it is because the gel is very, very hot at this point. So sometimes when it cools down, you'll realize that it is in fact very solid. It was just so hot, it started to be more flexible. So to make it easier for myself, I'm using gesso on the top of the plastic and metal items. So my paint or my wax is going to stay better. I can put it on the leaves, they're matte anyway, but to make it fair, why not? <laughs> Yes, I'm going to show you that in a moment, just eh, finishing with clear gesso. That was from my liquid acrylics fluid, col uh, liquid curled fluid medium. This is liquid uh, acrylic base of the paints. This is um, something you can use for making your paints thinner, but also for saving your uh, acrylic based pastes. It works really, really well.
Yes, we burn fingers quite often. This is the price you pay when you do mixed media art. Yeah, it's very good medium and it is really for keeping your product fresh for longer and for making liquid acrylics more transparent without changing the gloss, changing the uh, consistency of it. Okay, that should go. So this should be ready. I will check on my lamp. Come on, I will do the same thing in the, so it will be ready. I don't just, the flower. You don't have to paint the lamp again, just the things which are shiny metal or plastic. So it will be much easier to repaint. They're not even big, so you can skip that step. But the more you add, the more likely you will have a lot of shiny slippery object and it's just simply easier to put coat of gesso for repainting. I hope you know what I mean. Just be careful now, it's still a bit fresh, so try not to rip it off by accident, okay? It's going to be very solid after a few hours, very safe, but now we have to touch it carefully. Okay, off you go. You're going to dry and in the meantime we're going to paint the bottom. Quick, quick, quick. Of course if you can let it dry naturally it will be much better and safer. But uh, we are in the live stream and we have to speed up to make this look more entertaining as well. Okay, go and dry. So now we have perfectly matte metal object. We have a, a clear gesso as a start, then we added extra details using metal embellishments. And I told you the other option is using elements made with the mold and bend them when they are still wet, glue them on and let them dry on the object and then continue. And then we added a bit of the graphite paste to add extra texture. So it's going to look more like natural corrosion of the metal. And also it's going to add more of the um, vintage uh, look. So uh, that is basically matte and ready to paint. So this um, is very important when you work on the projects uh, which are altered art or mixed media or home decor that you remember about priming because then everything is much, much easier. Sorry, sip of tea. Thank you, Caroline. It is really something you can buy for nothing on the flea market or on the car boot sale, but it's great as an object to start with. You can use it as a base, you can use it as an extension like today, or you can just make another cool candlestick out of that, right? So, imagination is the limit. Uh, this is the, uh, the technique I was showing to my patrons when I was doing two ways making of uh, patina a video for them. It was live stream and I was showing uh, patina made with the paints and waxes and patina made with the patina paste. Today we're going to go for that look and we are going to use uh, matte waxes on the top of the metallic finish. So metallic finish, they can be two things uh, depending what you have at home. Um, I think it's easier when we have so many um, deep uh, cavities and gaps and so on. It's just going to be easier to use the paint, I think. Uh, but if you don't have the paint, I would recommend uh, colors of the metallic wax, which are going to be similar to brass or bronze or copper, because this would be the natural uh, color of the metals that would turn into green or blue patina when the oxidation process starts. Okay, so here I would go with the 
aged brass or bronze age or big mix of both, you don't have to worry. On the other hand, if you're using acrylic paints, I've got metallic paints. Uh, that is, uh, again, colors which will be corresponding with these ones. So, uh, aged, uh, sorry, brass hardware, steampunk copper, up to you, right? So, if you look at the original here, it's even more yellow. It's more similar to that one. So, you can even try to look at the antique gold color of the metallic paints. I'm just going to see if I have it on hand. Is it you? Ancient coin. Yeah, ancient coin. So even ancient coin looks quite similar. So you can go for any of these colors to start. Let's go with this one and this one together today. Why not? It's just paint. So these are acrylic paints with metallic finish. And we're going to paint and dry and then add the patinated look on the top. So you can see they are full of mica. And this is going to be very natural metallic looking finish. So graphite paints, as Carmen is saying, this is lovely finish. It's going to be completely black if you let it dry completely. And it has a bit of the sparkle in it. I'm not sure if you can see, but there's a bit of glitter to make this a bit more magical. But in the end, it is fine black sand in the, in the gel medium with a tiny touch of uh, fine silver glitter. So now we take some kind of mat, which, uh, okay, this one will do. And it's important to uh, repaint. I will take smaller brush in case if I need to get to the deeper parts of it. Okay, it doesn't have to be equally painted everywhere, so I can absolutely mix two colors if I want to. So in some parts it's going to be a little bit more yellow, and in some parts, it is going to be a little bit more brown. So it's really up to you what you want to do. And again, you don't really have to be super precise because remember, we are going to add another coat on the top. And today I'm going to show you the wax. So uh, it's going to be rubbed on the top anyway. It's more important to cover everything nicely. Look how quickly it is covering because we have the gesso and then the next thing is we have a really lovely texture thanks to graphite paste as well so if you feel confident you can even try to bend the leaves <laughs> and paint on the other side but uh, be careful okay we are doing that in a hurry so i will be a little bit more careful i won't uh, go there yet i will do it later but Naturally, you could just bend the metal leaf like this and paint the other side if you want. This is the advantage of the metal embellishments. I won't touch the other ones though, okay? So the metal was silver, now it is brass, copper, um bronze look something that would be from the warmer tones metals instead of course we need to find all the spaces and all the gaps so we don't have too much of the silver visible If you want to keep it clean, you can remove the bottom and put it back later. <laughs> this is the original color. <laughs> okay. I'm turning upside down to see if I didn't miss any important spot. There's one here. 
So thanks to Gesso, repainting is going to be quite quick. I'm trying to dab go. Oh. I'm trying to dab the paint in all the textures and of course the top as well. Basically done. Yeah, gesso is a blessing, Linda. I absolutely agree. Something that makes our project so much easier to do. Now, before I'm going to let it dry, I will paint the details inside of the flower as well. So I'm, I'm able to get into the spots that maybe I missed by accident, but now I can do it with a smaller brush. Of course, acrylic paint dries quite quickly, so this is our blessing again because we can continue our work soon we don't have to wait too long especially if you can find a nice warm and dry spot to dry it or you have the ability to dry it with the heat gun or hair dryer oh the in germany the lamp is on special offer for 3.99 till the 10th of january see there's still a chance to get it if you want to I didn't know it's going to be such a popular item, but I really love the look of it. So if you feel like this is something for you, go and grab your lamp from IKEA. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put it for the drying now. I'm just, I think this is very thick in here. You can see what kind of texture we created using the um, graphite paste. It is visible, but not overwhelming the whole composition, okay? I try to be... Oh, here I missed the spot. The best result is, of course, when the paint is completely dry. So it's better to dry it than be sorry. I let it dry and I will take my lamp to paint our second part. Oh, full price in the US, in Croatia. Oh, that is so bad. I got it for three euro, like three ninety nine, like uh, Gabby was saying, the same price. Oh. Blood suckers. This is what I can tell you. Blood suckers. This is not nice at all. They are suppressing our creativity. You should tell them. <laughs> okay, so I'm trying to paint. If you feel more confident, if you're going to open, Maybe take it this way, okay? If you have something that you can hold it, you know, that may be easier for you. So I will go this way. Twenty or so in Australia. <sighs> and tell me they are not bloodsuckers. They are. I'm, I'm, I really su uh, suspect it would be cheaper to buy a lot of them and send to Australia than to just pff, try to buy them locally. Austria is 9.99. Well, a little bit better, but still, <sighs> I'm not impressed. <laughs> 
Yes, Trala. Yeah, that's the name. Where? Uh, which website? IKEA, Violetta. IKEA. <laughs> Belgium 999. Yes, Stella led. Showing you packaging again. Strala. From IKEA. This is the lamp. other side like this. I probably pronounce it in an awful way, so all the Swedish, Norwegian and Danish people, please forgive me. That is the one. Okay, so I'll leave it here and I will be painting in the meantime in the case, because this is the last element I need to paint, not much. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. You're not going anywhere, no. I will have to stick you again. See, that one is not cooperating. I will have to be careful and stick the rose again. <laughs> Thank you. You know that you are so kind. I have no idea how to pronounce the name of the lamp properly. For me, it looks like Strala, something like that, but <laughs> it's probably something else. Yeah, the mixture is going to look more natural. And I will have to add more gel medium under the rose because as you can see it is moving but i won't give up so easily i will take a smaller brush six pounds in the uk a bit better so i got a very really good deal and the same good deal in germany because i paid 3.99 euro it was on sale so that is part of the truth here But I couldn't resist and I bought three. <laughs> Good to Strala. Okay. You have to tell me one time how to pronounce it correctly. Because I have no idea. This, there's a special A in this name so it has to be different okay now I will dry it and I have to stick look gel medium was still too wet so I'm going to put a bit oh yeah I know what happened <laughs> I know I know what I did yeah it will be very nice Christmas gift or decoration for the winter time so i will have to dry it a little bit more than the other parts because I forgot I should not put it like this. Silly me. I got too excited. The whole composition is better with the bottom part. Yeah, exactly. Well, this is the, the whole thing. We are holding one half <laughs> in hand. In fact, one quarter at this point. Done. And I'm closing. This was steampunk copper. 
steampunk copper paint and this one is ancient coin ancient coin will you put some black on the bottoms no i'm going to put patina green so drying in fact drying these two together is a good idea and we can start adding patinated color on the bottom part and then glue it together steampunk copper and ancient coin there are two colors that i was using Now, let's put it ta -da, in the right place. I can still see white spot, but this is not a problem. Nobody will know. Ta -da -da -da. I'm trying to press it down to make sure everything is going to stay in place the way it should. Taking away stuff which is not needed and let it dry as good as possible look at the beautiful texture of the rose we have now ah. and we checked we can still easily open and and change the battery inside which is very important So let's have a look. Ta -da. These two colors were, I'm just going to show you. <clears throat> For more yellow, it was ancient coin and for more brown, steampunk copper. So I was trying to imitate the color, natural color of the brass metal I have here at home. And that was something that was the closest. Uh, this is real frame I have at home. So when you look at this, it's a bit like this yellow, but in some parts it's more of this brown. So I mix these two together. And I'm getting quite close. Maybe it's a little bit too brown, but soon we are going to rub uh, the finish on the top of it. So I'm checking everything here. We have really lovely textures. Look at that rose. Look at that texture we created with the graphite paste. That would be very lovely antiquing look on your um, metal f sorry metal imitating frames on your uh, objects which are supposed to be metal so if you have something which is plastic or uh, glass and you would like to create the imitation of the old metal this is one of the techniques you can start with now um we can add the uh, finishing using paints of course and that is going to be a little bit more complicated because you have to have really matte paint and then if you want to use that item it will be good to varnish it as well so this is not coming off 
Uh, another very good solution is to use matte waxes because they are going to dry permanent and they're also protective layer as well. So uh, if you would like to create the look of the natural patina, uh, this is what we are going to do now. You can use combination of patina blue and patina green in the matte waxes. And of course, the more green you're going to use, the more green you're going to have and more of the blue, it's going to give you closer look to what we have now. The easy way is to start with the brush and then to rub it with the finger. They are waxes, in fact, they're cousins of the uh, furniture waxes and uh, they are quite easy to apply. So when you have the tube, remember this is matte wax. This is something a little bit different. So it may feel a little bit grainy in the beginning. This is because there is a bit of the pigment in it. So your job is to put it in the brush. Look at the natural color. This is going to be more green and it's going to dry completely matte. So now I'm, I can start adding the patina finish that quickly and then when it's still wet you can rub off from the edges using the wipe or cloth but in general our job is to create the feeling that it is all turning into natural process of the damage that happens to the metal. So I will do it gradually. I will start, let's say, in one part and then before the wax is going to get too dry, I can now add the touches, right? I can reveal the parts of the metal I want to see. Very simple and very rewarding. Later, what you need to do is to let it dry and you just leave it there and wait. And it's going to turn permanent. It depends on how fresh the wax was. And it also depends on how thick <laughs> was your application. And usually a bit of wax goes a very, very long way. So, you know, just saying, it doesn't, it's not like paint, you don't have to put tons of it to get good results, it's going to look nice anyway. I'm just using green now and it's going to be absolutely okay. If you feel you can't get somewhere, you can get smaller brush, but later you will have to wash it with hot water. So I'm trying to get a little bit deeper inside of this flower. Okay, I would like to add a little bit more here. So I will take a bit more of that into here. How simple is that? Like, this is so, so simple technique. It's absolutely... Uh, as you say, goof proof. That's what that's the word, the way you can call it. Because if it is a little bit too much, you can take your wipe or a piece of cloth and remove the excess when it's still wet. Of course, if you let it dry, it's going to turn permanent sooner or later. So please remember that. Yeah, it's very quick. I'm just going to do the wiping now. And the texture we created is now adding this beautiful natural looking. This color is patina green, patina green, matte waxes. Uh, you can do it more blue because some people like blue colors and you can use patina blue, but I am going for green only today. I just show you both because both of them are supposed to give you patina combinations i know different metals they also go into different shades so it's up to you how you are going to play with the colors
And of course you can do it on the whole project or you can do it in some parts. Imagination is the limit. I'm just going to remove a little bit before it's too late. Oh, see, this was too much. Oh, poor thing, no worries, I will stick you back in that place. <laughs> I was too uh, aggressive. <laughs> And in about a few hours, depending where you live, this should turn completely permanent. This is completely permanent finish, but it's, it has some working time. As you can see, in, uh, in the first moments, I'm still able to remove some parts of that wax. But uh, later, it's going to be permanent. And it's also protective coat. So water resisting so it is going to be like the furniture wax now i have to be more careful right more careful yeah sorry <laughs> poor thing <laughs> and that would be finished look so let's compare this to the original I would say not bad at all. Still looks a little bit more blue, but I think this is just the way it is. So you can put more of the color if you like. Now we have to work on the bottom, sorry, on the top. I'm going to put the bottom here. Again, we need a little bit more of the patina green. I will start with the big brush and then I will use the small one. Very quick, right? This is the best part. This really is for making this kind of makeovers very, very easily. How are you doing? I will be very gentle with the rose. I will try to rub it again to make sure the pigment that sometimes is a little bit visible here it's going to be more delicate. So you can do the thin coat, you can do the thick coat. It's really up to you. Now I will try to remove the ah, gesso. I will try to remove the excess from the edge here a little bit. just play this is basically fun with the color how far you want to go how deep you want to uh, apply the patina now I can go with the smaller brush into more textured parts you have a good five to eight ten minutes uh, before the wax is going to be too hard to remove so you don't have to panic you don't have to wor work super quick satisfying <laughs> yeah i agree I just want to remove most of this shiny, shiny metal so it is not going to be so visible. A 
and then I can remove the excess easily. Oh, here. <sighs> now. Have you got any questions for that part of the process? Don't wait too long. This is the only thing, right? Especially if you have nice edges of something, it's good to show the edges. Too heavy handed. You can pretend that somebody was trying to clean it so you can go and rub a little bit more in some parts. But in general, it's up to you. Personal preference. How far? you want to go with the patina. I say, well, maybe here on the stars. So now the last stage of the work is the putting these two things together. And that is a little bit of the construction and I intentionally did it as a last step because it will be hard to manipulate all these elements without breaking that in half easily because it takes a bit time before the um, the gel medium is going to hold it so i will just let it dry naturally till tomorrow but i will just show you what is my way of uh, putting that together first of all it's good to fill the empty space with something because we want to put one on the top of another like this right so this is the part of the plan so that is empty we need to do something to make it feel better uh, can i also use wax on wax yes exactly you can uh, just make sure gabby the uh, first wax is completely dry and then you can go this uh, the second coat of the wax in different color and they're not going to blend because if you start too early and the bottom wax is still wet they may just try to blend instead of drying and that would be uh, not a bit disappointing let's take maybe some paper towel to fill that empty spot you can put some um, whatever you have really it's just the matter of feeling that with something it may be <laughs> paper it may be cardboard it's always going to sit better when you have something here as well not just sitting on the edge so i think that makes some sense okay maybe a little bit more hmm what have i got here it would be nice to wait i would put you on the charger because i think my phone may be dying so forgive me 22 dollars in the us no way i paid 3.99 
<laughs> in Dublin. Okay, okay, 12. <sighs> it's a bit better. But still, that's too much. Okay, so now something simple. Let's take a piece of cardboard. I'm not master of making circles, but I just want to make like a little cup, a bit smaller. And probably more round would also do a good job. You can use the hot glue to stick the paper. Paper is going to be fine. Paper is going to hold, this is fine. Now, finding the right position, making sure the paper won't be visible, it's not a big deal, we can always put more patina in there. And now there are two ways. You can go patient way or you can go uh, quick way. Quick way is using the hot glue and securing that with the gel medium and the secure and slow way is to use the gel medium from the beginning. I'm going to go with a lazy way just a little bit to hold it in the middle to have the right position and then I'm going to secure it all the way around with the gel medium. So remember this is very important because your um, your hot glue is not going to hold it perfectly. And don't worry about the gel being visible. We can always put a tiny bit more of the patina. In fact, I'm going to put quite a lot of it. So, maybe some kind of tool like this. to put it inside. You know what I mean? Almost like a grout. So then nobody, where, come on. Nobody will know. Of course you can glue it first and do all the painting when it is completely dry but that means you have to let it dry for a few hours in the warm and dry place. We don't have that luxury here during live stream, so I'm using the other way. So I'm trying to push that gel in the gap and for now this hot glue is going to hold it it's just for now later even if it chips off the heavy body gel is going to secure it and hold it in place just the way it should be and of course if one day you are going to uh, drop it on the floor and it is going to come you know off you can just simply re-glue it mask it again with the paint and wax nobody will know your secret it's quite sturdy once you glue it properly it's hard to break but of course accidents happen Let me just go a little bit with the brush. I think I pushed it quite evenly, but... But you never know. If you don't feel secure, like you feel like, ah, 
I'm not sure if this is enough. You can repeat the gluing the next day, like you can do another layer. It's up to you. Remember, this gel is going to turn transparent anyway. So it's going to be something you will only know it is there. So there's no need to put any special coat on the top of it. The wax is working as our sealer. I'm just going to show you everything together. Just quickly dry it so it's not going anywhere. Six down from nine in Wales. Well, it is getting better. I can't promise it's going to be the same price everywhere, but like in Australia or in United States, it is really a lot of money comparing to what I had to pay myself. So before I'm going to show you everything from the side because it's much easier, I will explain again what we were doing. So we took a lamp and a metal candlestick and first we used gesso to prime it because it was metal then we added embellishments mostly metal embellishments another option is to use mold made embellishments especially when they are still flexible because they are not completely dry so you can make them round and i glue that all with the heavy body gel on the top of the bottom and the top part then um, our next step was to add a bit of the texture to create the natural uh, textures. Uh, I used uh, graphite paste because it's quite fun, fine sand. But you can also find another, one, another uh, kind of paste, whatever is convenient for you. And uh, of course, options, different options are available. Uh, then we added again a little bit of gesso to prepare it. And in the end, we started painting we were sorry for that i think my cat just played with the <clears throat> uh, with the tripod and um that is uh, going to be combination of two paints and i was showing i was using ancient coin and i was using steampunk copper and once it was dry we started rubbing uh, matte wax, uh, matte wax in patina green color. Another option would be patina blue. It would be much more blue at that time. And then I was gluing that all together using a uh, heavy body gel or combination of heavy body gel and uh, the um, hot glue just to hold it temporary. But remember, it has to be completely dry before you are going to play with it. So. For me, I'm just going to let it sit and dry completely. Let me show you that from the side. I know some of you, probably you don't know how the lamp looked like before. So I will show you the other one because I have two here. So you can compare. So this is from Ikea. Oh, come on, open. <clears throat> This is really cute lamp like this. So you can see this is that part I was altering. And the candlestick. I have one more. Candlestick was like this. So that is the bottom part. Now, let me show you that in the better angle. Sorry, that's me. Wait, don't get seasick. Okay. So, 
this is the top of the lamp. And this is the ready for display altered lamp made of two pieces. I'm trying to give you more. Okay, like this. And of course, you can turn it on. It has a battery operated light in it as well. So um, I made sure that I'm still able to open and close. So from here, from this lamp, using the candlestick, we went to this. And that is mostly metallic paint, texture paste and matte wax. And not too complicated. It was uh, more of the construction challenges. Of course, you can, I uh, have to secure it a little bit. The crown is loose at this point. Don't lose the crown. Ah, I know what I did wrong. Now it is correct. And uh, that is in full glory. I will now do a close up again. So you can see how it was all transformed. This is the bottom. I think my cat is <laughs> having some kind of argument, but I'm not sure what is going on. She's funny. Let me show you the details of it again. So I will turn into the right position. Um, it's really nice. It has the textures. So these are the textures we made with the um, graphite paste and they create more of the natural touch to it. And of course, if you have cheap looking object such as mirror frame or a vase or anything that um, needs extra touches, maybe like a window frame, or maybe you just want to create beautiful panel on your cupboard, you can absolutely adapt these techniques and get that look very quickly. So this is patina, of course. You can play with a different saturation of that patina. You can do more of the uh, metallic uh, touch and less of the patina. You can do more of the patina and less of the metal visible. It is all up to you. I gave you the tools, I gave you the ideas. Now it's uh, you and uh, your imagination. You can uh, decide what you would like to get. So I hope that was inspiring. It is really not um, demanding technique. It's just a little bit of uh, playing and fun. And you can have quite nice accessory for your home. I think people from IKEA would be proud. <laughs> So that is adoption. And of course, just to give you an idea, this doesn't 